Every time we look at a boat and people ask the price, I have to give some massive number that's often in the millions and at very least the many hundreds of thousands. So just for a change, I thought we'd show you something a little bit different. This is the Bolt Yacht 37 Grand. And this is about as much boat as you are gonna find for 250,000 pounds ready to go. As the name suggests, it is 37 foot long. Bolt yachts are a Polish yard. They manufacture hulls for a number of really high-end companies like Cormate and Goldfish, but they also build their own boats. But their speciality is not chasing ever, forever upmarket with ever more expensive, ever more polished, ever more highly finished boats. They go for a much more affordable, practical way to get on the water without having to take out vast sums of money. Now, clearly, I'm not trying to pretend that 250,000 pounds is an insignificant sum, but what you get for that money is basically a floating cottage on the water. And if you look at it like that, it suddenly starts to make quite a bit of sense. So it is a displacement only hull. It has a single engine. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But first of all, let's have a look at what you physically get in terms of space. Bathing ladder, it's very much intended for the sort of inland waterways and coastal passages to and from them. It's obviously not a performance boat in any means at all, but it is very efficient and very practical. Now, there's plenty of storage everywhere you look. Here we've got a stern locker. You can see some of the covers and canopies for this cockpit. We'll take a look up there in a minute. Another deep locker there for ropes and fenders and the like. And then if we make our way up, you see it's got full walk around decks on both sides of this well protected cockpit area and actually it's a very civilized little space we've got a wraparound dinette you could certainly comfortably sit probably six people around that quite a smart teak table and even the upholstery is actually nicely finished we've got a bit of detailing diamond stitch work and a decent sun canopy over it because most of the time you're just going to be pottering along slow speeds, hopefully on a nice sunny day like today. We've got a wet bar area over to port. You can have a barbecue or grill there if you'd rather, but most people will probably go for the sink option. There's a fridge under there. Keep all your drinks nice and cool. And a admittedly fairly simplistic helm position, but again, most of the time you're going to be going out the arena and turning right or left on the river or canal. So Again, you don't need vast touchscreen MFDs adding expense to everything. What you have got, single throttle control, simple wheel, small MFD, one traditional analog rev counter. Speed is not really going to be an issue. This is not a quick boat. It's displacement only, so most of the time you'll be going somewhere between four and eight knots and all the basic controls for lighting and anchor lights. Fuel tank, and that looks like the rudder angle. Now, let's have a quick look at what you get for your money. So this particular boat, I mentioned it was 249,000 pounds ready to go. This particular one as displayed, 286,000 pounds. Now for that, you get a number of options. This has the Yanmar 110 horsepower inboard diesel engine. You also get a bow and stern thruster, and I'll just show you that. It's rather a neat Vita system. You can see, effectively, it's all on the one button, but if you want to go sideways, you can push the whole thing, and that's bow and stern thruster together, or you can twist it like that, or just do the stern, or just do the bow. It's quite an interesting way of doing it. Very nice and intuitive. You don't really need to know too much about what you're doing. That also includes the Ford X Sun Lounger, the Flex Deep bathing platform, mooring pack, the Raymarine seven inch display, and so on and so on. So we'll take a look at those as we go. Good high guardrails, very easy to walk along the deck. We've also got a grab rail here. And whilst we're here, it's worth pointing out that we've got a number of solar panels. These are just to keep the house batteries charged, but it does mean that you can uh, run for longer without having to plug into shore power. This should keep 
the batteries charged most of the time. Big hatch there, letting sun and fresh air into the saloon. Another hatch forward, letting it into the forward cabin. And a rather dinky little dinette sort of arrangement up at the front here. And again, because you're only going to be pottering along on canals, this would be absolutely perfect. You've got a couple of spaces there to sit, a couple of paces in front, a small teak table, cup holders, relatively, you have to have quite thin glasses by the looks of things. And because you've got a nice rounded design here, there is enough space to sit a couple of people on this side too. Now there is a locker under here. You do have to pop up the cushion in order to access it. But you can see there is a locker there if you need to put an anchor in there. Again, most of the time, if you really are sticking to the river, you're unlikely to be anchoring very much, so it doesn't necessarily have an anchor as standard. And walk back, exactly the same. Noting got side windows in the hull. And a little security rail. Again, if you've got children on board, just quite nice to be able to seal it off. But look how much space you get down below. That is a really good size saloon. There's plenty of headroom. I'll give you an idea of this. I'm six foot one inches tall and there is massive space above me. That's got to be seven feet, I reckon. And having all that extra headroom, it's not just whether you're bumping your head on the ceiling, it's the whole feeling of sort of airiness, it, the volume, it, it feels a little bit cooler and less restrictive. And that also helps having these glass windows all the way around, really good and deep, got a full view forward, another big deep window here, and here are these sliding side sections. Again, quite simple, quite basic, but really effective, just lets the fresh air in. Here's that big overhead hatch I showed you, and then decent dining area here. You can see that will drop down, so you can get an extra bed there. There is an infill, so you can sleep a couple of people there if you want to. We've got the galley on this side. Now, interestingly, this is actually a gas hob. So even though it's uh, sort of contained and sealed, it looks like an induction hob, but it is in fact gas powered. So that's a really neat solution. It means you don't have to be plugged into shore power, but, but, into shore power, but you have the cleanliness and the ease of hygiene, I guess, up to a point, but it just looks a bit more modern and it's easier to keep clean. There's a Dometic oven in there. I think it's got the lock on at the moment. There we go. There's an oven, got a fridge, decent little sink, lots of storage. Look under here. And again, over on this side, big, big storage locker. And for example, all those cushions, the infills for the dinette and so on, it's really handy to have a properly big locker that you can put chunky items away in. I suspect there's probably more storage under here, it absolutely is. So again, under all those seats, lots and lots of storage. Now I'm not going to try and pretend this is the same quality as a Fairline or a Sunseeker, it's not trying to be that. And you don't necessarily need that, you know, you can have just as much fun in a more affordable boat and if all you want to do is potter along on nice days on the river or across to the canals or mirrors of the Netherlands, you don't need huge amounts of power and the very latest in terms of equipment and fit and finish. Now this is the forward cabin. Useful hull windows down below and again up at eye level. This is the forward hatch I showed you earlier. Again, a couple of windows over there, a small television in the corner. Now the bed is a little bit tapered at one end. It's not an entirely symmetrical bed. You can see it does curve in to reflect the shape of the bow. This side is a little bit cut, cut short in order to be able to access the bed easily. We've got some extra storage under there. Again, useful little shelves. More locker space. But what you do get, crucially, is an ensuite bathroom. So this is a two cabin, two bathroom boat. And there you can see there is a separate shower compartment. 
decent amount of headroom, again, natural light, all the essentials of life. And I think people are far more bothered about whether they've got an ensuite bathroom than whether they have the very highest quality cabinetry. Lots of storage space behind here. I'm really amazed. There is absolutely masses of storage space on this boat. And again, that's what, when you're cruising for days or even weeks, that's what people really value. You can get right down into the bilges there. That looks like the pumps for the shower in the bathroom. Now this is access to the engine. Let's see if I can lift that up for you. I'm not sure how easy that is going to be one-handed, but we'll give it a go. Twist that open, twist that open, and here we go. So actually, I think we can probably see that better from this side if I step across. There is that 110 horsepower Yamaha engine. Not going to be putting out a great deal of power, but it should be nice and quiet and reliable. I believe it has a 250 litre fuel tank, which I'm told should give you about 100 hours cruising. And for most people, that's an entire season's worth of boating. And again, how nice is that to be able to do an entire season's worth of boating, only fill up once and only with 250 litres. That's just a few fills of most family cars and yet you get an entire season's worth of boating out of it. Lots more storage all the way along here and quite a stylish touch this actually. It's got the kind of brushed stainless steel finish to it. Lots and lots of drawers, lots and lots of lockers. I won't open them all, but you can see that's an entire sideboard unit. There's more storage space behind here. A lot of sensible thinking going on. And then as we come back down towards the stern, look, there's another basket in there for all your tins or condiments. And then down into the aft cabin, more storage space there, hanging locker. And cleverly, this is both the ensuite bathroom for the cabin, but there is also day access to it. So if you're just on board during the day, you don't have to go into someone's cabin to use the loo. There is a heads compartment here. And they have found space for a separate shower compartment. Again, that's the sort of really important stuff that people care about. Rather than having a wet room where you get, when you have a shower, you then have a wet floor when you just want to come in and wash your hands or have a pee or whatever it is. People really care about having a separate shower compartment. Pretty good size, actually, that bathroom. And the aft cabin, pretty much what you'd expect. It's not full beam because of that bathroom. That does occupy some of the beam, but you've got decent transom window here, another eye level window here, two opening hatches, another window in the hull here, small cabinet on the forward bulkhead, decent sized bed that looks, I think it's not maybe just about five feet, it looks a little bit slimmer than that to me. So not the largest bed in the world, but perfectly comfortable for a couple. More drawers, and you do have ensuite access to that heads compartment too. So you have direct access through there. Obviously you can lock that door if you want to keep it private. Just put, trigger the little lock, and then that is your private ensuite bathroom. So. Let's finish up. Rather than going outside, I'm going to finish up here because I think this is where you're going to be spending a lot of time. Obviously, when you're helming the boat, you will mostly be up in that raised cockpit area. I should mention that if you want an inside helm station, you can have one here, but I just don't see that being used very often. I think you're much more likely to use the upstairs one. So I'll just remind you where that is. Here we go. This is the place to be on a day like today. So that is the Bolt Yacht 37 Grand, all 250,000 pounds worth of it. I've been rather charmed by it, actually. I like the fact that it's not trying to be anything too posh or too fancy. It's a good, honest boat. You get a lot of real estate for your money, and there's really no reason at all why you wouldn't have just as much fun on this 
as you would a much more expensive riverboat. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing something that's a little more affordable for a change. Do let me know what you make about it in the comments. I'd love to see them. And thank you for watching.